Hi guys, DVD Mike, I am back. I am actually making a video. I know it's been a stupidly long time and I said I was going to make more on a regular basis, but it all kind of went, yeah, into the ether. I don't know quite what happened. Um, I'm going to try and keep them regular. I know I say it's all the bloody time, but I am going to try and keep them regular because there is a lot to go through today. Um, I'm going to try and get through it um, as quickly as possible because... I know some people don't like the long video, some people really like long video, so I'm going to try and go somewhere in the middle, but there is a lot, a lot to go through. Um, in no particular order, these are going to be um, just Blu-rays this time, just stuff that I've bought since um, I last saw you guys. Um, so yeah, just going to go through from now, starting with Gary Ross's The Hunger Games. Um, never read the book, not a fan of the sort of tween literature. Um, but gave it a chance based on the reviews and was pleasantly surprised. Um, it wasn't the exact film I thought it was going to be, which is quite a good thing um, because I thought it was going to be a bit twilighty. Um, yeah, sure, it, it delves into that sort of romancy, tweeny thing. I don't mind romance in films, but if it's handled correctly. Um, yeah, I really, really liked it. I think it was really good. This is the uncut 15 rated Blu ray. Um, the DVD is still cut in this country. This is the Blockbuster Limited Edition, which comes with a slipcase and a collectible Mockingjay gift card with a £5 balance on it. Um, the disc is exactly the same in the red Blu-ray case, which I think is quite fetching, if a little bit HD DVD. Um, it is two discs. Um, like I say, it's uncut. Um, the DVD is cut, not by a lot. I think it's some, like, a few, I think some minutes, something like that. Um, but it's worth getting the uncut version if you can get it. The rental version is cut as well on Blu-ray, so something to watch out for. The rental version is a 12 on DVD and Blu-ray. Um, yeah, good film. Looking forward to, um, oh, was it Catching Fire and Mocking Jane? Won't read the books, I'll just carry on with the films. Quite like them, quite like Jennifer Lawrence. I think she's not really pushing herself like she was in Winter's Bone and like X-Men and in this and in that horrible House at the End of the Street crap. But I think she's got talent and I think she needs to actually use that talent as opposed to just coasting like she is at the moment. Next we have um, a film which isn't out until Monday and for some reason, probably because it's not out until Monday, it won't actually play on my PC. Um, I've built a new PC since I last saw you, um, pretty high end and I now have a 3D monitor. Um, I've got a dual monitor array, um, one that's 3D, one's 2D, I'm going to match them up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so I can actually watch 3D stuff, so I've been looking at a lot of 3D stuff and because I love this film so much, I know there are haters out there, I don't want to get in a discussion about how people liked it or didn't like it, I think it's a very flawed masterpiece. I think it's beautiful, I think it's painterly motion in it, I think it's absolutely fantastic in places. Talking about Ridley Scott's Prometheus, this is not out till Monday in the UK. This is the UK 3 disc 3D version. Um, if you like this film, get the 3D version. Even if you haven't got a 3D TV, it doesn't matter. If you're paying extra, but there is a very good reason. It comes with the attractive slipcase, which is neither here nor there to some people. Um, but in here we have disc 1, the 3D disc, which you probably won't be interested in. Disc 2, 2D disc, which is the same yet in the normal release. And disc 3, special features on a Blu-ray. That is not in the standard release. The standard release is just the normal 2D, and a digital copy. That is it. Um, so if you do want Prometheus, if you do like the film, um, I know I'm a big Scott Brothers apologist. Um, I would get a black band for Tony. Um, I was going to do a video when Tony killed himself, but I don't know. I don't know what I could say. Um, I love Tony Scott. Um, I think he's one of my biggest influences. Um, he's my mentor. Not personally, obviously I never met the guy, but you know, the way he moves his camera, the way he does things in film is how I, you know, would place the camera, what I would do with it. I just, yeah, huge, huge idol of mine. Um, but yeah, even being a Scott Brothers apologist, I think there's a lot to be said about Prometheus. Um, and if you're thinking, oh, I won't watch the extras, um, there's going to be a few like puff pieces. There's a three and a half hour documentary done by Charlie the Kazula. Um, I can never pronounce his bloody name. Um, but three and a half hours of just pure behind the scenes making of. That's worth it for price of entry alone, I think. Um, great film, amazing in 3D, just beautiful, probably the best 3D I've ever seen. But won't play on my PC for some reason. Um, Power DVD isn't having none of it. Um, couldn't get it to work whatsoever. Um, probably because it's a new disc and it's not even out yet, therefore, I don't know, maybe they're going to 
put a patch later on when it comes out, or maybe they didn't know about it, I don't know. But it won't play. Uh, I'm going to watch it in 2D in the next couple of hours, actually. I'm going to watch it tonight. Um, I just finished watching one movie, and I'm going to go straight up to the other one. The film I just finished watching is probably close to my film of the year now. Um, obviously, the year isn't over, so it could be surprises. Um, but we have Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom. Fans of my channel know I'm a huge Wes Anderson fan. Everything he touches, I have loved. This is no different. The cast is amazing. The leads could have come across twee and kind of annoying. You know, some child actors just haven't got the pathos to pull off something, you know, well, like this, like the stilted kind of weird Wes Anderson way, you know. Um, but I thought it was fantastic. I thought they did a really, really, really good job. Um, the Blu-ray is nothing to really write home about. There's no real extras. There's a set tour of Bill Murray, um, Look Size Moonrise Kingdom, and the Welcome to the Island of New Penzance. There's not a lot on there. Because I would imagine Criterion will be doing one in the US because they've done every Wes Anderson film apart from Mr. Fox. Um, fantastic Mr. Fox, sorry. Um, this is the HMV exclusive edition which comes with some rather nice glossy art cards. Which are not, you know, the be all and end all, but they are quite cool. Um, yeah, really, 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 really like the film. I know a lot of people have put it on like best of the year lists already, and I'm no exception. Wes Anderson is fantastic. And there's something about the way he puts a film together that just, I know, kind of works for me. But with that many real big stars as well, I mean, like, Tenenbaum's had quite large stars in it. But there's something about that movie. It's a magical thing, really. Um, next, we have another film which will also go on my top 10 of the year. Um, probably quite easily, actually. Um, we have Gareth Evans' The Raid or Ray Redemption if you're American and you're watching the cut version because it was cut in America I believe I think the the actual Blu-ray is unrated now so I'm correct me if I'm wrong uh, I was going to get the still book but I've kind of gone off still books of late I don't know I'm just kind of done with them so I went with the lenticular slipcase I don't know if you can, guys can catch that um, this is probably the best version to get um, it is region B locked to Americans unfortunately um, it is one disc but it has um, a lot more extras than the American version does and it is the uncut version like I say if the American one is uncut fair enough um, I'm not sure if it wasn't it has got two versions of the film though um, UK theatrical cut and uncut version I think there's only about a minute maybe two minutes difference um, trailers audio commentary with Gareth Evans video blogs fan films including Catalyst oh Clay Cats the Raid Clay Cats the Raid which is the raid all done with cats it's on YouTube um, pretty funny in places uh, featurettes behind the music with Mike Shinona and Joe Trapinzi. Uh, my name is Gareth Evans, Mike Shinona and Joe Trapinzi. I, can never, I don't know his name. Um, yeah, great film. Um, came out of the cinema out of breath. Thought it was really intense and really well made. If you like action films, watch The Raid. Don't let the fact that it's subtitled put you off. It's worth it. And if you don't like subtitled films, maybe it's worth watching a few and just, you know, breaking that because you're missing out on so many good films and the dubs are never any good. It's always worth watching the subtitled version of films in my view. Talking of subtitled films, we have um, another subtitled film also from Momentum I believe. Is it the same Momentum? Lost it. Yeah, it's Momentum. Um, Morton Tidelums, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, Headhunters, based on Joe Nesbo's book. Um, absolutely fantastic. Blown away by this. Um, Watched it just for, I don't know, just because there was nothing else to watch really. Um, rented it and thought, oh my god, that was fantastic. Um, really took me by surprise, good little sort of noir thriller. Um, people have linked it to like Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and things like that. I think it's better than the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo and the original versions. The original versions are very TV and stagey. I think Headhunters is a much better film. Um, it's better written, There's it's got real tense you know, key moments in the film where you just think, ooh, ee, someone's going to get caught, and that, that's what you want from a thriller. That's what they don't get nowadays. They think CGI is good enough for a car chase or a helicopter chase for any thriller in Hollywood, but tension, that's what they did. That's what Hitchcock did. Watch North by Northwest. Yes, it had the big spills, but it also had tension. Any moment you think something could happen, that's what you want. Headhunters, absolutely fantastic. Re recommend it wholeheartedly. Probably going to go on my um, top... Uh, blah, blah. Top 20 of the year, easily. Fantastic, fantastic film. Um, have another one here. Cut, 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 c
<laughs> Next we have one that I bought, um, I was going to um, buy it for ages, I think I bought it on DVD um, from Poundland, weirdly enough, and give it to my brother in the end, because um, I was going to buy the Blu-ray, never got around to it, and finally thought, do you know what, I'm going to dip on it, because I love it, Ty West House of the Devil, now this is just the standard UK Blu-ray, it's nothing fancy, it's not like, um, I think Disc Junkie's got the VHS copy, which is really damn cool, um, it has decent extras, it's got commentaries, um, and um, like a, I think a making of, and deleted scenes and stuff, but amazing, amazing, again, tension, this is what kids don't get nowadays. They don't get the... We well, have people coming all the time sort of asking about, oh, what horror movies are out, what horror movies are out. And it's like, all they want to see is paranormal activity. They want to see CGI and they want to see gore. They want to see a dummy sliced up or they want to see a CGI chair flying across the room. They don't understand that this is like an hour and a half of tension and then 10 minutes of action. That, that's, that's what I love. That's, that's fantastic because it builds you up and you become uneasy and you think, oh God, something's going to happen, something's going to happen. And then you go wow when something does because it's such a shock but you always think there's something around the corner and that's what Ty West does really really well um, also recommend a film called The Pact um, I don't own it yet um, I am going to pick it up eventually um, but it's definitely one that I really 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 enjoyed again tension and storytelling and it's pacing and that's what you want from movies well I want from movies anyway from horror movies something where the songs put some effort into it and they built and built and built the tension and then it snaps and then you snap at the same time. Fantastic. Um, also talking of Ty West we have his follow up Innkeepers. Um, not actually watched this yet. Keep meaning to but have him around the corner. I thought I might as well get House of the Devil and that and then do a double bill or something. Um, heard good things about it. Again the people that don't like slow burns and they want their instant gratification of gore and whatever else. I'm not going to like it, um, but I don't really care. Um, also, he found Kelly McGillis. Who knew where Kelly McGillis was? I haven't seen her in a film in God knows how many years. Um, again, decent extras on. It's got commentaries, lead scenes, making ofs. So, you know, it's a decent package, but it was only cheap, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to buy all Ty West things. I've got to see VHS, even though it's not quite his film. It's like a compilation. Um, but that hasn't come out over here yet, so I'm hoping it will actually make it in time for um, Halloween. Fingers crossed. Um, next we have, I don't know direct this, Phil Lord and Christopher Miller, 21 Jump Street. Went to see this with, mm, I wasn't, I was going to say high hopes then, but I had no hope for it. Um, there's nothing on the cinema, I went to see it because I had nothing better to do, don't like Channing Tatum, Jonah Hill's getting a bit old. Um, really liked it, it's really, really funny, I was really surprised, there's the standard UK release with a slipcase. I was shocked at how funny this movie was. Um, it takes a lot for a comedy to get me. It takes a lot for me to buy a comedy. Unless it's a Kevin Smith film, I don't tend to buy them. Um, but this was just so bloody clever. Um, it wasn't mean-spirited. It wasn't nasty. It wasn't gross out. It was just cleverly written, well-acted, fun. And that's, that's missing. All these things are kind of throwbacks, really. All the last couple of ones to a time when... People put effort into making films, and they weren't just worried about the box office back end or whether they could sell a toy on the back of it. You know, I mean, it's it's not, you know, The Godfather, but it's really funny, and I was really surprised, actually. Um, got a commentary with um, directors and cast, back to school, delete scenes, gag reel, Johnny Depp on set. See, that's a big spoiler. I knew he was going to be in it somewhere, and Richard Grieco, and all the other people from Twin Jump Street, and who knew when they were going to turn up, but the fact that... Sorry, I've just spoiled everyone else, haven't I? It's on the back of the bloody box. Um, Cuba Rama, Brothers in Arms, Peter Pan the Furio. So there's a lot of little featurettes. Really good film. If you haven't seen it and you like a laugh, I would heartily re recommend it. Next we have um, a triple pack feature, which I don't normally buy. Um, anything like that double book things, I hate having two films on one box. Because then if you're doing it by director, you can't put them together. If you're doing it by like genre you can't put them together it kind of gets on my nerves um, but I really wanted to see Oliver Stone's JFK again and getting the digibook or any other version of it is quite hard because I think they're all out of print but I managed to find the um, director's cut of Natural World Killers again so another copy of that also with Any Given Sunday which I hadn't seen in ages and JFK and all three of the director's cuts um, I think it was about 13 quid from Amazon 
So I think that was a bargain in the end. So I got to see JFK again, End Given Sunday again, and another copy of Natural Born Killers, which doesn't hurt. Um, it has all the extras from the previous versions, because all it is is the same disc just put in another box. Um, no details on the back about extras, but they all have the same extras from their individual versions. But that's not a bad double, that's not a bad triple pack. All those films are worth watching, I think, and Any Given Sunday is probably his last decent film. Um, but yeah, just want to see JFK again, because I can't remember why I got the feeling that I wanted to see JFK again, but there's something about that film that's really, really well made, even though it's stupidly long, probably too long for what it is, and a bit too preachy. I think it's still a good film, and it deserves watching if you haven't seen it. Um, next three, uh, I'm going to do sort of together, um, because they define um, when I got really seriously into film. I was always into film as a kid, but when I really got seriously into film, um, was in sort of mid-90s, and these films really sort of were watershed films for me. Um, so first we have um, Doug Lyman's Swingers. Um, I don't know if anyone knows that I'm sort of a fan of Swingers. Um, I don't think I've mentioned it before, really. Um, but I finally got around to getting the UK Blu-ray. Um, pitch quality leaves a lot to be desired. It's not fantastic. It could have done with a decent remaster, but at the end of the day, these Miramax Lion Gates releases are really, you get what you pay for, and they're not going to put any extra money into it, so all they're going to do is just shove them out. And at the end of the day, I'd rather have it out than not at all. Um, it's got the audio commentaries and the making ofs from the um, original two disc, I think it's one disc in America and two disc over here, DVD version. So it's got the extras which is good and it's good to finally have it on Blu-ray so I can actually watch it whenever I want. Um, the next two are very intrinsically linked basically. Um, first we have the amazing, 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 amazing Gross Point Black by George Armitage. Um, I adore this film. There's nothing I don't like about it. I own it on Laserdisc twice. I've got it on DVD. Um, I was hoping, because it's a 15th anniversary edition, that um, Disney were going to put some effort into it, like they did with the Rocketeer picture quality. Maybe some extra features, maybe something. No, there is nothing on it. Picture quality is really bad in places. Um, it's a really old HD master. It looks like shit. But I don't care. It's gross point back on Blu-ray. Um, I haven't watched it in a long time, so I finally got to watch it again. Still love it, still think it's a fantastic movie. I think it's one of the best things John's Cusack will ever do. I never did get through War Inc. <coughs> Excuse me. The pseudo sequel. Um, I did mean to watch it. I've tried to watch it about four times, can't get through it. It's just appalling. I go about 40 minutes into it and just give up. Um, the second best thing that John Cusack's ever done, uh, sorry, third best thing, that would be. The second best thing, the first best thing is say anything, obviously. Um, third best thing would quite easily be um, Stephen Frears High Fidelity. Um, amazing movie. Um, love the book. I'm a big, big Nick Corby fan, and the book is fantastic. Got up in arms when I thought, well, I'm going to translate it to America. How's it going to work? But I thought, do you know what? It's got Rosenberg's involved. It's going to be decent. The writing's going to be good. And do you know what? Blew me away. Fantastic movie. Um, I've got it on DVD. It's an American DVD, so I haven't watched it as much as I thought I had, really. It's been a long time since I've seen it. It does contain all the extras from the DVD, which is not a lot. Conversations with John Cusack and Stephen Frears and deleted scenes, and that's it. Bit of a shame they could have put more effort into it, but I don't think they really care. I think Disney are just trying to get their back catalogue out, all their touchstone movies, just so they can say they have. Um, I've got to pick up a few more Adventures in Babysitting, one I really need to pick up. I've been to pick it up for months. have never got around to it, I don't know why. Um, but, great movies. Absolutely fantastic. Um, the next one was one I bought around the same time, from the same sort of, well, a lot earlier. But a film I very much grew up with, me and my brother, uh, what are you, RKO82. Um, we grew up watching it for for years and years on VHS and on um, later on Sky and on TV, any time it was on we always watched it. Um, but it wasn't that well known over here, which is kind of a shame because of the name. Um, so we have Jonathan Lynn's Clue. Um, Clue, the American board game, is known as Cluedo over in the UK. So you couldn't really sort of match them up. But this film is so much fun. Tim Curry alone makes this film for what it is. Um, and you think of all these um, older films coming out on Blu-ray. 
this is how you do it. Paramount put the effort in. The picture is beautiful. They put so much time, money and effort into the picture of this. And you think, you know, this wasn't the biggest box office thing in the world, whereas they did reasonably well, but apparently not well enough. Paramount put the effort in. It's got all the different endings. Um, people don't know, if you saw it in the cinema, you got a different ending, um, depending on where you saw it. Each print, I think, had a different ending. There was three different endings, um, and it comes with the trailer as well. So all the endings are on here. I haven't watched it yet to find out which ending is the main one, or whether it just, like the TV version, plays all three endings in a row. I haven't found out yet. But a beautiful, beautiful picture quality for a really, really, really fantastically fun film. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it wholly. It's brilliant. Seek it out and definitely watch it. Okay, so next ones. Um, like I said, kind of bored of still books, but I have got three that I have bought in the last, well, since I saw you guys last. Um, first, we have um, James Cameron's Terminator. Um, this is kind of disappointing on many levels. I don't like the cover art because it's not a still from the film, it's not an original promo artwork. <coughs> Excuse me, if you look at the Amray case, it's got original promo artwork. It looks miles better. I mean, it's not a bad drawing, but it's not exactly uh, faithful, is the word. The gun's wrong for one. The backs are kind of okay. I mean, still books are what they are. I mean, even the spine's got the proper artwork on the spine. That kind of annoyed me. Um, and the disc as well. I mean, it's like, I think there's an Italian still book coming out, which has that on the actual um, still book. The inside's okay, gunshot scene. Um, the, the disc is a huge disappointment for me. Um, James Cameron's Monkey with the pitch quality, it's gone all teal, don't like that. I'm in fact re-editing it myself to try and get the teal out and it's going quite well so far. Um, I don't like the fact that they update all these bloody pictures, all these films to the picture quality to make them look current and new. Uh, I know I'm get a lot of hate for this but I don't care, I don't like how it looks. The, the transfer's lovely, I mean the transfer's got a lot of grain, it looks decent, it's fine looking, it's just the colour timing, they, it's bullshit. I don't care who was involved, I don't care that James Cameron was involved, it's not authentic, it's not the way Terminator looks, it just bloody isn't. Um, and I know, direct the hate down there, I don't care, I'm not going to look at your hate, don't care. Do not like how it looks? And the sound is even worse. The 5.1 remix from the DVD has been carried over to this. You don't get the original mono with the original soundtrack. Um, the soundtrack cues are still missing. The um, sound effects are still missing. So they changed the sound effects to sound effects from Terminator 2, when Gary Rydstrom redid the remix. I think Van Ling was involved as well. No, just, just no. Um, I'm actually trying to re-edit the um, mono back in. Um, it's really bloody difficult. Trying to get a laser disc track to sync up with the Blu-ray is quite difficult. I'll do it in the end. I'm, I'm determined. I'm reasonably good at editing. I'll get there in the end. Um, real disappointment from that, but finally got the Terminator on Blu-ray. At least I can watch it. It's, it's something. You know, it's better than not watching it ever. Um, or having to watch it on DVD. Um, yeah, so, you know, disappointment, but what can you do? You can re-edit it, apparently. Um, next we have um, a couple of themed ones. First we have... Um, Avengers Assemble, the, um, well, the English title. Um, this is the HMV exclusive still book. Now, I only got this because I now have every single Avengers Phase 1 movie in still book. That's it. The only reason I got it, like I say, I'm done with still books, bored of them. But at the end of the day, they now all match. So, I mean, OCD being what it is, I'd rather have them match than you know, have, not have a still book, basically. So, I don't know, it's it's kind of disappointing on another level. Let's talk about disappointment with this bloody Blu-ray. All the, well, not all the extras, there's extras missing from the US version. The UK version is censored. Um, it wasn't in the cinema, but this Blu-ray is censored. I won't spoil what it is. Um, and it's missing the Joss Whedon commentary because apparently they couldn't get it done in time, even though there was only about a week's difference between the US and UK release bit shoddy but hey ho what can you do I'll just have to check see if with the um, American ones region free and then import and swap the discs over easy peasy um, next two I can't really go into depth on because I'm keeping them sealed we have the play.com exclusive Iron Man and Iron Man 2 stillbooks again I've got all the Avengers now in stillbook I'm keeping these sealed because they are worth a lot of money already they've already sold out and already selling for huge amounts of money 
the American versions were already stupidly in demand, like three, four hundred quid for the first Iron Man. So do you know what, for 10.99 I took a punt on them, keep them sealed, and that way at least I have every single Avengers all together in Steelbook and they nicely match. Because, you know, OCD, what can you do? Next we have a couple of Amazon sort of blind buys in a way. Um, first we have another Scott film, Ridley Scott's White Squirrel. Um, I have this on Laserdisc, I've never actually seen it though. Um, it's one of these forgotten films. Ridley Scott doesn't talk about it, no one talks about it. I think a lot of people didn't know Ridley Scott made it. It's about Jeff Bridges and these um, kids on a boat and I think everything goes wrong and they're trying to sort everything out and they grow together and you know, one of these kind of boys own adventures things. Um, it has no extras apart from a trailer, it's one of these cheap sort of Mill Creek releases. Um, I think it was a Buena Vista, yeah Buena Vista, <coughs> if they don't put it out themselves. They put it out from Mill Creek or occasionally Lionsgate. Um, so a lot of stuff they don't put out themselves at all. Um, that's why I'm surprised Mimic got so much attention, they got the director's cut and everything else. But some of these like and um, High Fidelity and Gross Blank don't get any attention. Ah, it is what it is. Um, haven't seen it yet, really am really, um, looking forward to watching it on these days. Uh, next we have, um, first for me, we have the first ever music Blu-ray I've ever bought. Um, Peter Gabriel's Secret World Live. Um, big Peter Gabriel fan, um, not just because of Say Anything, because, well, yeah, mostly because of Say Anything. Um, it's um, really good looking. It's 16 um, millimeter, and they've remastered the image at 2K to make sure they get all the information out of it. It looks beautiful, it sounds amazing. The sound on this disc is absolutely fantastic. Um, and for a couple of quid, it was definitely worth it for all the extras that are on it as well. It comes with um, a decent sized booklet as well, which you know, you don't get in Blu-rays nowadays. But it's cool, if you like Peter Gabriel and you like decent concerts, it's a really, 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 really good concert and well worth a watch. Um, it's a big Laserdisc demo back in the day, and I think there was a decent DVD of it as well. Um, but the sound is top notch, you really can't go wrong with the sound. Um, then next we have the heavy one. Um, something I've been looking forward to for a very long time, and something again I'm quite disappointed in. Um, pitch quality wise, and a few other bits and bobs. We have Bond 50, the 50 years of Bond. This is every film that has currently been released. Um, a lot of people said to me, you know, you don't buy box sets until the franchise is finished. So why have you bought this? Well, this is the first 50 years of Bond. So there'll be another 50 years, maybe there'll be another 50 year box set. Probably not in this same format, obviously. Um, it's a really hard, cardboard slipcase with two hardback books. So you have the first years and the second years. And each book has the disc slotted in and they're all in chronological order. And each bond gets a page as well, so the best bond, obviously, Mr. Dalton. And that guy who was in, you know, some films. Um, yeah, the um, the extras from previous discs have been ported over, so you're not missing out on anything. Um, the only thing I'm missing out of is the extra disc that came with Casino Royale Deluxe Edition. But Casino Royale is now first for the first time uncut in the UK. It's a 15 rated film now. So the torch sequence is in fully, which is good. Um, very nicely on the back there is a place reserved for Skyfall. So Skyfall just slots in, you have the first 50 years, and you get another bonus DVD of extra content, which I haven't actually looked through yet. I haven't really watched much of it, to be honest with you. Um, I know this becomes a constant thing by things where I haven't watched them. Um, but I have watched um, Living Daylights, and the pitch quality, which I'll come on to in a second, is yeah, mediocre. So Connery's... And there's a me going into more, more... More gets quite a lot, because obviously he did it for a lot longer. And that's it. Um, yeah, pitch quality. Um, obviously the ones that first came out, people cooed over. I'm not a big fan of the way Lowry slash Reliance do their restorations. They take all the grain and dirt out and then put a fake layer of grain over the top. It's not authentic. It's not the way the film should look. I prefer warts and all, but, you know, that's just me. Um, there's a lot of waxy faces in some of them. The ones that haven't been released yet, some like um, Living Daylights, 
doesn't look that good. It's a bit too dark and it's there's no grain to speak of. It's kind of meh. For a celebration of Bond's 50 years and me being a huge Bond fan, I expected more and I really shouldn't have got my hopes up. It's a nice set. I mean, I only paid 89 quid for it. And that's pretty cheap because then there's 22 movies in there. But still, it's not quite what it should have been, I don't think. I think that they could have done better and I think they should have done better. Um, but yeah, it's it, it's okay for now. Uh, and then the box is nice. If they release new remastered versions, then I can always slot them into the box. That's what I was thinking. At least I can watch them now before Skyfall comes out. I don't know, it's kind of bittersweet. Um, I did have some all the original versions that released in the UK. I gave them to my brother because I wasn't going to use them anymore. And I don't really have nostalgia for old releases. Unless they're like a really cool special edition. So I just kind of got rid of them. I mean, it's, yeah, let's say a bittersweet. It's um, a cool box. And I don't regret owning it because it's Bond. But still, a bit of a kick in the teeth. They could have done a lot more. Um, next we have 10 that I bought in HMV. HMV are currently doing this deal, which is um, 5 for £30 or 3 for £20. But I read that as, ooh, 10 for £60. And I thought, you know what, I'll pick up some that I haven't bought and I really should own, just to fill some gaps in the collection. So basically it's still sealed. I only bought them on the cheap and I thought you know what I'll, I'll open them as I watch them because this is where I know what I have and haven't watched. So we have The Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward Robert Ford by Andrew Dominic. Um, really really wanted to see Killing Him Softly, missed it in the cinema, it's my brother's favourite film and it was Tony Scott produced so I thought it's rude not to, I have to pick it up. Um, haven't watched it yet, um, really 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 looking forward to it though just because everyone says it's really good. Um, talking mediocre, uh, mediocre transfers we have the Appalling DNR mess of Face Off. Um, one of John, well, one of John Wee's best American releases. Um, it's really got issues. The transfer, it looks muddy. There's no definition. It might as well be on DVD. It might as well be on Laserdisc. My THS Laserdisc has probably got more detail than this transfer. Absolute crap. It's missing extras. Hasn't got the deleted ending. Um, the PCM soundtrack was all right, but I don't know. There was not much to say about it. It's kind of middling but a lot of these releases are middling the ones i didn't buy because i was waiting for a better edition but for the price i thought do you know what sod it um we have john frankenheimer's ronin um own it on dvd first dvd i've bought funnily enough um really really liked it haven't seen it in years no extras apart from trailers and i believe it's an old mpeg2 release as well or it might be avc foxnet we didn't really use mpeg2 um but yeah it's it's a good film i haven't seen it in years i thought do you know what give it some money why not um, same reason I bought this, Edswick's Siege. Um, this, along with Living Daylights, weirdly enough, um, were banned during the time of the Gulf War. Uh, not the Gulf War, sorry, the 9-11, um, because of obviously terrorists in New York, and that was about the um, Mujahideen and sort of Taliban-y things. Um, really, really good film, real pot boiler. I like pot boiling thrillers that don't really go anywhere or do anything, and I'm pretty sure it was never an 18. I've got to find my DVD out to see if there was a reason why that's suddenly an 18. Or maybe it's just because of sensitivity issues or something. Could be in the um, audio commentary or something like that. But it's got decent extras. Um, it's a good film. I really do recommend it. Um, next we have... Who directed that? Ah, of course it was. James Mangold's Cop Band. Great film. Absolutely great film. I don't know if this is director's cut or not. Um, I need to look into this and research it. This is a cheapy Lion, Lionsgate Mirror, like, Mirror, Miramax release. Not expected much from picture quality. It has got delete scenes. Um, and commentary, so it might be the director's cut. I have to sit down and watch it, but probably what Robert De Niro's last decent film. Um, we also have um, another film that I hadn't seen in years, and really wanted to pick up just because I was looking for stuff to pick up in the in the um, offer. We have um, Rod Richard Donner's um, Sixteen Blocks with Bruce Willis. Um, really like this movie. Um, it's fun. It's you know doesn't demand anything of you. It's a good Saturday night sort of thriller. Um, it's got decent extras. It's one of the first um, Blu-ray releases. Things on HD as well. So you only get Dolby Digital. You don't get any HD audio. Bit of a pisser, but I can live with it. Um, and then we have um, a great film that's sadly underrated. Pierre Morel's From Paris with Love. Um, decent enough transfer. Warner Brothers always, you know, don't do much. Um, sounds really good. And it's fun. It's really fun. I mean... I don't know why I didn't do Taken 2, because Taken 2 is obviously a clusterfuck of epic proportions. Um, 
It's weird. I don't know why he didn't go back. Maybe he fell out with Luke Vasson over something. Who knows? These French and their temperaments. Um, slowly becoming my favourite director, of all, one of my favourite directors of all time. We have Ryan Johnson's Brothers Bloom, just an amazingly fun film. Um, I've seen it a couple of times, but it never came out on Blu-ray when it first came out. So I had to wait and wait and wait, and finally they released it. Um, has got featurettes, deleted scenes, commentaries, um, trailers. So it's got decent extras. Um, if you haven't seen Looper, go watch it. It's amazing in the cinemas now. Please go see it. Um, if you haven't seen Brickle Brothers Boom, watch them. He is a director to watch. Absolutely stunning what he does. Um, he's more like a commercial Wes Anderson. That's probably the best way I could describe him. Um, talking about kooky commercial directors, um, we have Terry Gillingham's The Imaginarium and Dr. Panassus. I've been waiting to get hold of this for years. Don't know why I didn't break down and buy it. I love this film. Um, obviously it's got a troubled history. Um, I love everything Gillingham does, plus Lily Cole's in it, and she's actually a surprisingly decent actress, um, as well as being, like, smoking hot. Um, hasn't got, you know, it can't get around its, its stigma with Heath Ledger's last film, but it's got decent extras, it's a Gillingham film, it's beautiful, it just looks beautiful. It's got a ton of extras, well worth watching, I would have thought, mostly probably based around Heath Ledger. Um, and last but not least, we have um, a really underrated director, I think, Mr. George Clooney's Confessions of a Dangerous Mind with the amazing dancing Sam Rockwell. Um, another Lionsgate Miramax release, so I'm not expecting much from the picture quality. Um, it has got to delete soon's commentary, you know, screen tests, Easter eggs, feature commentary. It's got all the extras, so at least they put some effort into it. So, yeah, that's the rather large update. Um, I'm kind of out of breath and saliva. Um, but yeah, I'm going to keep keep it going. I've got a few in the post now. I mean, that's what I kept doing is waiting. Oh, someone's going to come. Oh, don't do a video now because someone's going to come. Oh, that's going to come. Oh, I'll get that in the video. And there's one I really want to put in the video, but you know what? I had a spare couple of hours. I might as well get it ready. I might as well do it now. And so I did. So yeah, um, update sooner, hopefully, next couple of weeks um, when I get a few more in the post. And um, yeah, sorry to be away so long and Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, until next time, dude Mike saying, I'll see you again.